going on, Abby family? It is your boy, K-Dub. This is K-Dub's High Five. Five rapid fire questions with your favorite hobby faces. And today we bring in a face that is pretty much known all over the hobby social media. Uh, I know him as Bo, but you probably know him as one million. Yes, I said one million Cubs cards on social media platforms. How are you doing today, Bo? Doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. Oh, man, it's my pleasure, man. I, I really... I've kind of followed your journey along the whole way and I'm looking to kind of looking forward to kind of hearing how it how it come about and where you're at now. Um, but how it works, five questions are all hobby related. They're coming at you one right after another. Ready to take on the high five? Oh. All right, man. For people who don't know who Bo is, aka one million Cubs cards, uh, give me like a rundown of kind of who you feel like you are in the social media hobby world. I feel like I'm just a collector. I'm just like uh, I'm just like the average collector, um, but I do know that I have a, a a significant following. So I've got to be careful what I say on social media, and uh, I got to be careful with my words. But you know, I just love the hobby. I love collecting. Obviously, I love Cubs baseball cards, and uh, I love to share it all on social media through my various platforms, and and that's. That's who I am. And I've been fortunate to turn this into a, a full-time profession. For sure, man, for sure. And you do you do eBay as well um, as the social media platform. So you really are the the, the cards guy, Cubs cards guy. So um, talk to me a little bit. You said you're the average collector, but I don't know any average collectors that have 1 million plus cards. Um, like where does that idea stem from as far as as your your, your kind of social media identity goes? always been a quantity guy. I've always okay. loved to have a lot of cards uh, going all the way back to when I started collecting in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, when I started the 1 Million Cubs project in late 2017, I had begun acquiring a lot of bulk, buying collections. Mm -hmm. And at, uh, at that point, I had about a million total cards. And a lot of them were from the junk wax era. And it's oh. hard to get rid of some of those cards. So uh, in, in the past, I had always saved the Cubs cards, you know, set those aside. Uh, I had also done team trades throughout the years. So I knew there was uh, an outlet that I could trade for Cubs cards. You know, I could, uh, do team trades with, with the yeah. various teams. Yeah. And I figured since I have a million total cards, let's, uh, let's get rid of a million cards and, and turn them into a million Cubs cards. And, mm. uh, so in December, 2017, I started the, the Twitter feed and, uh, just kind of the other social platforms came along the way. And I was on the journey to collect a million Cubs cards. And you're there. I am there. Uh, hit it at Wrigley Field. That is amazing. What was that experience like for you to get, to make your goal and to be at the home of the place of the cards, team cards that you collect? I mean, what was that, what did that feel like for you? Just absolutely surreal because uh, I wanted to make it special. I wanted the 1 millionth card to be special. Mm. Uh as as it progressed, I thought I'm just gonna buy. You know, I, I kind of have a card in mind that I want to be the the celebratory one millionth card, and I, I'm just gonna do it at the national. That was my thought. Like I'm just gonna go to the national. I've got my budget. I'm gonna buy the one millionth card. Yeah. Tops had reached out to me and said, "Hey, uh, we've been following your journey. We've been talking to the Cubs. Would you be up for us giving you the one millionth?" Cubs card and how can you turn that down so uh, that's how it all that's how it all came about it was my own super fractor uh, on the field I threw out the first pitch at Wrigley before Cubs Dodgers game uh, and uh, it, it's my own super fractor one of one with my favorite design of of my childhood the 89 tops design mm. man I, I just go back to how we started this saying I'm just the average collector Man, I don't know many average collectors who get to throw out the first pitch of their favorite baseball team. I mean, what an honor. How cool is that? Just amazing. It takes me, I'm a huge Pearl Jam fan. And okay. the first time I saw Pearl Jam at Wrigley Field, Eddie Vedder was, uh, is uh, a big Cubs fan. And he he talks about growing up, going to, to Wrigley Field, sitting in the bleachers, rooting on Jose Cardinal. Mm. And I remember being at the concert at, at Wrigley in 2016 and Here's this guy who grew up a Cubs fan performing with his rock band at Wrigley Field. And I'm thinking, what's got it? Like, what's his, like, that's like an absolute dream, you know, to, yeah. to, to be there. And, you know, th then I got to live it for myself as a baseball card collector. Here I am 
hearing my name on the PA at Wrigley in front of you know, before a game and I'm on the video board and I'm walking out to the mound with a baseball in my hand uh just you know as a as an eight nine year old you would never ever dream of that ever happening yeah yeah an eight nine year old or an 89 year old I mean right. it, it's, Idiot. It's, it's an opportunity man that uh, uh just what a privilege what a cool thing so um well let's get into your collecting a little bit and talk about some of those influences you said you grew up in the 80s and 90s of junk wax collecting but who would you kind of credit as those people who kind of pushed you into sports cards or introduced you to sports cards I was introduced by by family, and I think a lot of us were were like that. Growing up in that era, uh, everybody was buying baseball cards, and and uh, my brother's a little bit older than I am, hmm. and I remember him buying boxes, and I couldn't imagine somebody could buy a box of cards because I'm you know I'm taking my my allowance money and buying a pack or two, uh, and I remember him chasing the Billy Ripken era in '89 Fleer, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know I had a, another cousin who. Uh, he came up and 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 actually brought my mom to the game uh, at Wrigley. Okay. Uh, his name's Chance, and so uh, he was a big influence in my childhood as a collector. And then, you know, throughout the way, there's been various influencers in in my collecting and in my uh, my sales portion. Uh, from a from a hobbyist side, uh, a lot of people that I've met through social media, and I've I've been able to meet them in person at, at card shows and, and the mm -hmm. national and and different places. Um, Zach and Porter father son combo they got back into the hobby during the the pandemic Zach did and uh, introduced his son uh, and I really envy that father son collecting relationship that they have uh, and uh, you know from a from a business standpoint Burbank cards and, and Rob out at Burbank I mean he's just like that's uh, as a as a volume seller on eBay that's you know I think everybody strives to to build something you know a fraction of what what he's built. So there's been a lot of influences in, in my, in my life as a, a collector and, and now in the, on the business side as well. Yeah. And I think it's cool to see the progression um, of your influences, right? Especially as you move more into um, the, the business side of it, which your cards can be found on eBay. Give me the eBay uh, a store name. A million Cubs. Well, of course. I mean, what else would it be? So uh, if you're on eBay checking out, uh, want to look for, you know, cards for yourself, maybe some cup cards for yourself, uh, 1 million cup cards. Uh, all right. I want to know, man, that this is, this has got me intrigued. Uh, you said you're on Wrigley, you get the one-on-one of yourself, but if you had to pick the grail item for you or the grail card for you, uh, let's say not of yourself, uh, who would that be or what would that be and why? So, uh, I've I've really taken a, a liking to pre-war, especially tobacco cards. Okay. I love the history of of the game, mm. uh, and especially when it comes to the Chicago Cubs. And before they were named the Cubs, they were the White Stockings as, as the National League club. So I really like the the 19th century cards. And yeah. one of the first superstars was Cap Anson uh, in the 1800s. And there's a few Allen and Ginter. Uh, there's Allen and Ginter. There's a Goodwin Champions, uh, an old Judge. Uh, Ginter's been a product, you know, they, they, you know, revived that tops did a uh, mm -hmm. decade or 15 years ago, really love that product. So that's a card that I've, I've kind of targeted as, uh, as, as something that I'll, I'll chase now that now that I've hit a million, uh, that's going to be a, a, a gift to myself for, for reaching my goal. And, um, you gotta tell me, I don't, I don't know that the, the pre the extra, extra vintage, like what year is that? What? I mean, what, what is that? What does that even look like? What do those cards even look like? Oh, it's uh, it's from 1887. 1887. And, uh, my goodness. That is insane <laughs> in my brain. And they're, uh, they're a little smaller. They, yeah, okay. uh, they're similar to like a T206 tobacco card, Got it. Got um, it. you know, smaller, narrower. Um, and, uh, as a quantity guy, I've got to go for the, I've got to go for the beaters. So I'm, I'm looking <laughs> for a one. I've seen them at the national. I've seen threes and fours at the national, uh, which uh, even the ones are high priced. So yeah, uh, if I get into the three and four range, that's way over my budget. So hopefully, I can find a a, a one uh, this year. What I mean, a card from eighteen eighty seven. What's a three or four run? I mean, what's the price range of that card? They can they can get as cheap as uh, I had one. I I had a a one point five. Uh, from SGC of uh, 
kind of a more common player from 1887. Yeah. And uh, the guy brought it to my table, you know, heard, you know, I'm the Cubs guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, what do you want for it? And he said, ah, 175. So I'm like, that's a great price. Um, so you can get them as, as cheap as, okay. you know, 100, 200 bucks. Um, but, you know, a Cap Anson is going to run a few thousand. And, and obviously the, you know, the higher the grade, the the more it's going to be. But they're, they're still pretty affordable for, you know, in that for being 140 years old. Yeah. I mean, it's literally like a piece of history. You know, that's what I think about those old cards, you know, um, those 1887. I mean, you're, you're talking history in your hands, the stories that card could tell. And for 175 bucks seems like a no brainer to me. So uh, that's really, really cool, man. I'm I'm looking forward to, to hearing the journey on that one because uh, that would be really neat to see. So, um, all right. Fourth question for you here. You got all the money in the world. You can rip any box of cards throughout the history of cards. Uh, what grab, what box are you grabbing and why? This is a tough question. And initially I wanted to completely ignore the, the monetary, uh, because a lot of people are going to say, ah, 52 tops. Cause I want to pull the mantle, but that's monetary. Yeah. Um, and as a Cubs collector, so I wanted to, Think of a product that uh, that I could pull something that is not just your run of the mill. So I think I'm going to go to tobacco and that era where you okay. couldn't go buy a pack of tobacco cards in the early 1900s. Yet they were in packs of cigarettes or cigars. So if I, if if money was no object and and you're like you can rip anything you want, I would want a, a pack of I, non-smoker, but I'd want a pack of cigarettes from 1908. <laughs> Uh, to, to find a T206 card, it, 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 it'd have to be guaranteed that there's a, a, a card in there. Yes. But I think that's what I'd want. Just the, you know, you, the, the unknown of, of what's, mm -hmm. you know, in that pack of, uh, pack of tobacco as yeah. a, as a trading card. Absolutely, man. I, I just, I love your, your thought process behind your collecting, man, because it's really the history of the game. It's the history of the game of baseball. And, and then, you know, no, nothing more historical than the T206. So we'll dump those dirty cigs out and we'll figure out what we can get you in the T206. So, um, all right, man, final question for you here. Um, obviously you've made your goal. You've, you've got a million Cubs cards. Like now that you look at your collecting moving forward, how would you say that your like collecting habits or your collecting styles have changed now that you've made your goal? love this question because it's never been asked in this way. Um, and it really has changed my outlook on collecting because up until 2017, I never had a focus in a collection. I always bought cards. I always traded for cards, but there was really no end game. There was, there was, you know, I wasn't buying cards or trading for cards. I would build sets and I would collect, Oh, I, I like, you know, this player or this team. Uh, but there was really no focus. Um, I was all over the place. But in 2017, when I started the project, it gave me focus. Uh, and uh, I had a goal. I worked toward that goal and it accomplished that goal. So I think for the first time in my life as a collector, I had purpose in my collecting. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was able to chase a goal and, and you know, eventually reach it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's quite the goal, man. I mean, and that, I, I guess that leads me into a little bit of a bonus question here, but a million cards, how much space are we talking? Does that take up for you? I have, uh, I have a, a good size basement and uh, I've got a, a storage, basically a card room that's 600 square feet. I've got 13 industrial uh, shelving units in there. Uh, so that's where my Cubs cards, most of my Cubs cards are. Um, I keep some of the, the nicer ones, the older ones in my, in my office, uh, in a, in a, uh, mm. shell in a uh, display case. Gotcha. Uh, but you know, the, the bulk of them are, you know, just sitting in boxes in, in my card room. And once you, once you start thinking about a main, is there any organization to that? Or is it just, I get them, I count them, I put them in boxes. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to really organize them as they came in, but uh, they started coming in fast and furious. Sure. And uh, as any collector knows, sorting is is very time consuming. Yeah. And when when you're getting a few thousand cards a day, yeah. uh, at, at some points, uh, it, it's hard to keep up. And and mm. I kind of, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of exited that thought process early <laughs> on uh, in, in terms of, of getting them sorted. So uh, mm. now I'm at a bigger 
uh, issue and now I'm at a million that need to be sorted as opposed to, you know, a hundred thousand or 200,000. I can't even begin to fathom it, my friend. Uh, uh, and my wife would be shaking her head if she heard this conversation that we're having right now. So, um, hey, man, I, I want to do I want to high five for two reasons. Number one, you finished the high five. But number two, you finished a million Cubs cards, my friend. So throw it up. We got a high five. Throw it up. Into the, the high five. Uh, hey, follow Bo. Uh, let me get him right here on Twitter and IG. One million Cubs. And then on Facebook and YouTube, one million Cubs project. And then the eBay store is the same, right? One million Cubs. Million Cubs, uh, direct link, 99centcards.com also goes there as well. Fantastic. I'll make sure to link all that in the description uh, of this video. Uh, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, Dizzy Dub One. Also, follow me on Twitter or X at Mr. K Dub. Shout out to our high five endorsers this season at Midwest Box Breaks and LJ's Card Shop. Always remember, my friends, be the good. Bo, you are, you are a legend in the hobby in my eyes, my friends. So, Keep it up. I look forward to seeing what the next venture is for you and your collecting, but well done. Congratulations. Thanks, man. This was a lot of fun. All right. Y'all take care. We'll catch you next time on the next high five.